holy name. Glory to God. Bless his holy name. The Lord is faithful. Got to fix my shirt for you guys a little bit. Glory to God. Bless his holy name. What a word on today. I love to get words on Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday. Those are three days you will catch a word. It's not no definite time yet. <clears throat> or, or will it ever be? It's just we go on Tuesday, Fridays, and Sundays. You'll most likely hear a word from me. I give a word. Well, you'll hear from me, but it'll be coming from the Lord. The Lord gets all the glory, <clears throat> praises, and honor. We're going to go straight into the word because um, it's about to hit um, one o'clock. Good afternoon to you all. God bless you all. Thank you for your support and your kindness. I hope that the words of the Lord touches us all today and um, blesses us all and cleanses us so that we can, so that we can live holy and righteous before him. Glory to God so that we can make it in. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, we're going to be reading today from James 4. Uh, I always get something new out of this. Sometimes I, I probably did this uh, sermon probably like a million times. But you know what? Each time the Lord shows you something different with a word. That's why you go over it again and again and again. And you get something out of it. James 4 and 7. We're going to go 7 and we're going to close out 7 to 17. 10 verses. And we're done. <clears throat> and the Lord shall be glorified. James 4 and 7 says, Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now, the, the way to resist the devil is to submit yourself. And not just submit yourself, but you got to submit yourself to God. A lot of us got our, we submit our souls to different things. But if you was to submit your soul to God, you'll be able to resist the devil. And the Holy Ghost will show you, the Holy Ghost will teach you how to submit yourself. What you should be doing to what you should be doing to, to 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 help your soul, how to apply yourself to God. I always say, well, there's a couple of ways to apply yourself to God. You got fasting, you got studying, you got praying, and you got meditating. There's also other things that you can do, some worship and a whole bunch of things. But I go with these four right here: praying, meditating, fasting, and studying. Those three, those four things is very important. Um Absolutely essential. They all go together. You got to do them um, in order to submit yourself, therefore, to God. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And this is how the devil will flee. He'll flee. Yeah, keep coming back and he'll flee. Whatever he thinks your weakness is, because we all have weaknesses, had or some still have weaknesses. He comes and attack the weaknesses. And then they keep coming. He'll keep coming. Them demons will keep coming. Until you pass the test. That's why you keep going through the same thing over and over again. Because you haven't been delivered from that test. God wants that test. He wants you to pass that test. And in order to pass that test, this, 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 this word right here. This beautiful Sunday word is showing us to submit ourselves to God. This is how you do it. And this is how you do it. Number eight says, draw nigh to God. And he would draw nigh to you. So you draw to him. You put yourself in his presence and God will surround his presence around you. You draw nigh to him, right? Also being humble in order to draw yourself in the presence of the Lord. You must humble yourself, right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. You must humble yourself in order to draw yourself to God, draw nigh to God, humble yourself. How do we humble ourselves? Well, if we're doing something wrong, we go into God and say, we're sorry. That's a humble spirit. Humble spirit is, Lord, I'm doing something that's not, that, that I know is off. And God gives us all common sense. So we know when we're doing something that's not like God. So God wants us to humble ourselves. And he'll draw nigh to you. So God will come to you. His presence will come to you. And he said, this is what the Lord said. He said, cleanse your hands. That's what he's saying. That's why you got to go to humble. Cleanse your hands. You sin it. You're a sinner. So you're, if you're a sinner, if you're living in sin and you're denying it, that's to make you a sinner. That's what a sinner is. A sinner is someone that don't want to come out of their sin. That's what a sinner is. A sinner is someone that, that doesn't reckon or they recognize they sin, but don't want to come out. They don't want to repent. They don't want to change, right? That's a sinner, right? 
Um, the Bible says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. See, purify your heart, cleanse your hands, because if not, you're double-minded. You're double-minded. See, you can't see God. See, see, God wants to deliver those of us that are double-minded. Yeah, you can't you can't be double-minded, right? We can't live just any way that we want to live. We, we got to live according to how God wants us to live. He's holy, so he wants us to come before him correctly, which is humble, right? In order to resist the devil, right? Or you just keep getting attacked and attacked and attacked. And number nine will prove it. It says, be ye afflicted, see? Be afflicted, right? You be afflicted. Some of us are afflicted and mourn and weep and let your laughter be turned into what? Mourning. See, that's why there's a saying that says, laugh now, cry later. Eventually, that's what happens to all of us. You're laughing now, you're mocking now, you're playing now, but eventually, it will turn into mourning. Not just crying, but mourning, right? Glory to God. Not just weeping, but mourning. Ain't that something? So some of us are mourning because we have not submitted ourselves to God. Some of us are afflicted because we have not submitted ourselves to God. Some of us mourn because we have not submitted ourselves to God. And we're weeping, you're weeping, and, see, you're, you're, and you weep, let your laughter be turned into mourning. Glory to God. And your joy, whatever joy you have, because you can, see folks, we can get joy from the world. The world gives for a, a false joy. Christ gives a joy that's everlasting. Jesus gives us a joy that's everlasting. The world gives you a temporary joy. Right? That's why the Bible says, let your joy turn to heaviness, to heaviness. So one day you're up, next day you're down, you're heavy. You got a burden on you, are heavy. Ain't that something? Because God allowed your joy, that the temporary joy that you have, to be turned into heaviness. Glory to God. So it becomes heaviness. And some of the heavy. And this is how you get the, now in order to get the heaviness off of you, the affliction, the mourning, and the weeping, and all this stuff to come off of that body, off of that soul, you have to submit yourself to God and God will help you. He'll give you perfect peace, right? Whose mind that stays on him. Your mind stay on him, God will give you perfect peace. He said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. God will give you strength to beat that heaviness, right? Heaviness fall upon us because the devil has put heaviness on us. So he afflicted us in all these things, right? And God allows it because you have not submitted yourself to him. Right? And see, and that's why it says to resist the devil. You have not resisted the devil because you these things fall upon us because we still have issues in our lives that we have not um, um, completed them. Issues in our lives that we have not conquered or overcome. So God wants to be the overcomer. God wants the victory in your life, in your soul. Glory to God. Number 10 says, humble yourself. See? That's the key word. Humble yourself. In the sight of the Lord. The Lord is speaking. Humble yourself. Yeah. Learn how to humble yourself. Right? This, and this is teaching us how to humble ourselves. Draw nigh to God. Look forward to him. Seek him while it's early. Call on him while you still could call. Yeah? Run to him while you still could run. Speak to him while you still could speak to him. Worship him while you can. Praise him now. Yeah, glory to God. Praise him in thy sanctuary, in your sanctuary, which is your body. Glory to God. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall what? Lift you up. Now, this is how the heaviness come on. God wants to deliver you from all these afflictions. You're mourning, you're weeping. Yeah, he wants, to, he wants to deliver you from that, right? And he shall lift you up. This is how he lifts you up. He's just showing that God is showing us how. And if you listen, those that have ears to hear, they're, they're hearing what the Spirit is saying to them. Instead of getting mad, but the conviction is actually turning us around to God so that we can surrender, right? So that we can make it in instead of falling ourselves, falling deeper and deeper in darkness and denying the deity of God and denying the deity of his holiness and righteousness. Right. But we are coming closer to God because the word of God is truth. Right. And he said, what? Lift you up. This is how the Lord lift you up. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. What's that pastor? What's that brother? What's that teacher? Well, it's like I said before, it's a mini. It's coming to God, being real, being real, not fake, but being real. God, I have a problem. Lord, it's me. Lord, I'm struggling. Lord, this stronghold, I need help. See, instead of saying, no, it's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay and never will it be okay to live in sin. Never. 
It's never okay. It's never, it will never be okay with God. That's why I said you're double-minded. Only a double-minded blind person will consider or even justify sin. Right? But we are not supposed to do that. And that's why we keep getting attacked by the devil. We keep getting attacked by the demons. We can't sleep at night. We have no peace. The Bible says there's no peace for the wicked. Glory to God, right? And because you will not submit yourself to God. You submit yourself to everything else except God. And sometimes the things you submit yourself to are the things that you love. Anything you love before God is an idol. And all idols is a curse. And then you put a curse upon your life. And sometimes God would take that curse and destroy it. Ain't that something? He had killed. See, God would kill the curse. And then folks are so blinded, they go find another curse to worship. Instead of worshiping God, the creator, folks will worship the creature or things that belong to the earth. Ain't that something? Animals and birds and trees and sand and rats. We worship cows. We worship idols and images and things and candles and saints. But God say, worship him. The Bible says, he that worship him must worship him what? Spirit and and true. God wants all the glory and all the worship, and he wants us to draw nigh to him. Not to man-made things, but to him. And he's his spirit. Number 11 says, speak not evil one of another. God saying, this is why I told a lot of us speak evil one of another. Right? He that speak of evil of his brother and judges his brother, speak of evil of the law and judges the law. But if thou judges the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. A lot of us are judges. A lot of us are super religious, right? Super religious. Some of us, get, we, we, we judge as if we forgot where we came from. The Bible here says, says, and judge of his brother. He that speak of evil of his brother and judge his brother is evil. Yeah, just as you, 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 you. see, this is what's so scary about folks when you're judging other folks. And I was doing it. Now, see, I'm big enough to say that. I humble myself to say that. Right? We got to stop judging for because we came from the same predicament. And some of us are still struggling and need God. Glory to God. We need him more than ever. And you're speaking evil and also judging. It just makes you evil and wicked yourself because you're speaking evil when you judge your brother. Because where you came from? God showed you mercy. God showed his tender kindness and tender mercies on you. Some of the things that we've done in the dark and some of the things that we've done in the open and God covered us. So we got to be careful how we judge and how we point fingers at those that fall. Right? Glory to God. But it's our job to love them back into the fold and correct them in silence and correct them in, in the spirit of love and let the Holy Ghost do it. And it's not you that's judging, but it is the Holy Ghost through his love and kindness, which comes from the word of God. And the conviction will change that brother because of the Christ that's in you. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Glory to God. Greater lives in you. Glory to God. Let us not be judges. Let us not be a judge. Glory to God. Because the Bible says there is one lawgiver. There's only one. And he tell you there's only one lawgiver who is able to... To save and destroy. There's only one God. That is able to throw a man in hell. And that is able to put a person in heaven. Right? Who art thou to judge another? Come on y'all. Let's stop. This is the word. Some of y'all are still going to judge even after this. Because you're religious. Right? Religious folks. Most of the hell is full of religious folks. This is what hell. See, listen. I want you to hear. Hell. Hell. Is full. Full of religious church folks, right? More than sinners. A sinner have a better opportunity. I want you to hear me. Jesus. A sinner has a better opportunity to make it into the kingdom of God. Because God would deal with them directly if you're religious. Yeah, right? But we'll continue judging anyway. A lot of us are convicted, lot of us are convicted and we'll change, right? But he says, he said, there's only one. Who art thou that judges another? Who are you to keep judging folks? And what they're doing and standing in front of places and yelling at folks and going all crazy and all that stuff. God had patience on you. He had kindness and tender mercies on you. His compassion overflowed on you. So the same way God did us is the same way we should be doing folks. 
Pray for them. If they don't hear the word, they might not hear it now. But continue to pray. Let the Holy Ghost teach them. You preach love and they come in. You draw them in and then God will do the teaching through a, through a, through a certified Holy Ghost filled teacher. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But who are you? Who are thou? The Bible says. That judges another. Who are thou? Why do we do that? Why have I done it? And I thank God for, for delivering me. Why, why are we judging people? It is not the correct way of preaching the gospel. Because those that judges are on their way to hell if they do not repent. That's why God got this message. Right? And God will use somebody else to save that sinner's soul. Because yours is screwed. Just as, if not worse than the sinner. Because you do not see yourself as not love. That is not love. God is love. And the Holy Ghost teaches no matter who a person is or what they're doing, let them come as they are. Let God change them. Yes. God will either change them or he will remove. Let him remove them. But it's not your job to remove them. It's not your job to beat them down. Let God handle the sinner according to their heart. Right? And it says, go. To now ye that say today or tomorrow, we will, be, we will go into such a city. And continue their year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know what shall be on tomorrow. But what is your life? It is even a vapor that appear for the lifetime and then vanish away. That's how we are. We, we go on day by day talking about what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, next year. And we're really not promised. We're really, we're really not promised tomorrow. Thank God for today. And even today, we're not promised to finish it out. So whatever we do, we give thanks unto the Lord. Glory to God. There's no promise that we're going to close the day out, but we thank God for right now. He's a right now God, and he deserves a right now praise. So make sure you praise him right now. Glory to God. Praise him right now. Glory to God. For ye ought to say, if the Lord's will, if it's the Lord's will, that's what we should say. If, if it's the Lord's will, tomorrow I'm doing this. If it's the Lord's will, next year I want to be doing this. If it's the Lord's will in five years, I got this planned and this plan. And if it's the Lord's will, it will happen. Glory to God. If it's the Lord's will, right? Right? That's what we should be saying. This is what that said. It says, for, for that you ought to say. This is what we ought to be saying, right? If it's the Lord's will, we shall live and do this or that. That's what it says. That's scripture. All right, so if, if it's the Lord's will, we're going to do this. If some of us be saying, if it's the Lord's will, I hope I'll be married next year. If it's the Lord's will, I'm, I'm, I'll be celebrating this. If it's the Lord's will, I'll be celebrating my sons or my daughters graduate. If it's the Lord's will, but we forget that Lord, we forget that the Lord is the holder of time. We forget that the Lord is the one that could take our breath like this. We forget it was the Lord that woke us up today. We forget it's the Lord that covered us with his blood and covered our children and our mothers and our fathers. It is the Lord that controls death and hell. It is the Lord that controls it all. And that's why he deserves the glory. That's why I said the beginning of wisdom is what? The fear of God, the fear of God. That's the beginning of wisdom, fear God. Fear, which means reverence. His holiness, reverence, his power, reverence, his judgment, reverence, his, his, his power, right? Because he is God. But this is what we ought to say. If it is the Lord's will, we'll do this and we'll do that, right? And it says, but now ye rejoice in your boasting. And this is all such rejoicing is evil. We do these things without giving God the glory and the praises and all that stuff God is saying is evil. If you leave God out of it, it's evil. So anything we do and we leave God out of it, it's considered evil because God should be a part of everything that we do. Ain't that something? Go over to God. If God is in it, his hands is covering you. But if you're doing something that's not like God and God is not, he's not in that, right? But God wants to be a part of your vision. God wants to be a part of your plan. He wants to be a part of your family. He wants to be the center of it all. God wants to control it so that you can make it. God wants to give you advice. God wants to be your father. 
And the father that loves his child, he'll chastise them. And when God chastises his children, that means he love them. Glory to God. So we give him praises. And number 17, and we're closing out. Therefore, to know. Now you know. We all know now. We can't say we didn't hear it. One thing when you hear this word coming from me, it, it comes from the Lord. And when you hear it, this is what it says. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good. You know now. You know to do good. You know to change. You know to submit yourself to God. You know to draw nigh. But he that knoweth to do good, and the Bible says, and he do it not, to him it is a sin. So when we know, we know we shouldn't be touching that. We know we shouldn't be smelling that. We know we shouldn't be eating that. Right? Some things we know we shouldn't be doing, but guess what? We're doing it anyway. God said, touch not the unclean thing. Ooh, God said, touch not the things that he told you not to touch. Glory, Glory to God. To but God. turn to God. Turn to his righteousness and his holiness. In Jesus' name. Jesus. And crows out this wonderful word with a prayer. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, Father. Thank you. Our righteous king, we thank you, God, for this message. And Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for your truth. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you're touching our hearts and our hearts is in a state of standstill because we know that you are God. Oh, Lord, we praise you for your holiness and your thank righteousness. You, God, we praise you because you are a just king. Yes, Lord. We thank you, God, because you're not full of um, favoritism or competition, but God, you teach us yes, to live holy. You teach us to be right. Yes, you Lord. teach us what's wrong and what's right. We thank you, God, for discernment. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit, which is the spirit yes, of Lord. truth. Hallelujah. Oh God, any error that's in our hearts, fix it and clean it. Amen. Any heaviness that's upon us, lift it, God, in the name of Jesus. Name any of Jesus. burden and any weight that's keeping us down, God, oh, we Lord give it to, to you in the, Jesus. in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord, thank for you, our Lord. families and thank you for our loved ones. Thank we you, even Lord. thank you, God, for our enemies. Hallelujah. God, we ask right now that you bless our enemies thank and that you, you change them with thank our you, power. Jesus. And we ask you, God, that you change yes, those Lord. that are not saved and let the light into their Hallelujah. mind and in their heart Jesus. and fill them up with thy spirit. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you even right now right for now, everything Lord. that you're doing. Thank God, you, we bless you when it's wrong and when we're wrong and when we're right. God, we bless you yes, for everything Lord. in the name of in Jesus. Name of God, Jesus. fix us and clean us and lead us in the ways of righteousness. Thank you, God, we thank you for thy word. We thank, thank you, you for thy truth. God, lift, lift, we lift you up. Yes, Lord. Because, God, you deserve all the praises, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Amen. We thank you all. Thank you all for your love and support. I love you all. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. Happy Fourth of July. Amen.